the surgeon u.s surgeon general has released an advisory on the healing effects of social connection and community and it's saying that an epidemic we, we are in an epidemic of loneliness and isolation what did they think was going to happen they literally put us in isolation for more than a, a year and now they're saying oh it's an epidemic what did they think Guys, my name is Jay. This is Christian Recovery and Hope and Faith Today. And <laughs> I'm, I'm reading this and I'm going, why in the heck did you think that this was a problem or not think this was going to be a problem in 2020 when you guys put us in isolation and now you're going to sit there and say we're in an epidemic or call it a, uh, a, a public health crisis. Unfortunately, I don't have a intro video as uh, I, I really felt like I needed to create one that wasn't using an already published song so I will get one of those eventually but guys ever since the f beginning of Tom God told us that we didn't need to be alone Genesis 2.18 then the Lord God said it is not good that man should be alone I will make a helper fit for him. And he's going to make a helper fit for you. If you're single or alone, he's going to make somebody that will come alongside you and, and be there with you if you listen to him and you don't try to force it. But let me, let me read to you some parts of this advisory that the, the U.S. Surgeon General has put out. The Surgeon's General Advisory is a public statement that calls the American people's attention to an urgent public health issue and provides recommendations for how it should be addressed. Advisories are reserved for significant public health challenges that require the nation's immediate awareness and action. This advisory calls attention to the importance of social connection for individual health as well as on community wide metrics of health and well-being and conversely the significant consequences of when social connection is lacking let me tell you when when we're in recovery one of the most important parts is not to be in self-isolation you, you can't do recovery in self-isolation when you do it that way or when you attempt to do it that way you're going to fail because you're relying on yourself for your recovery process and you're not leaning on your brothers and sisters for help and you know, we, we literally have to help each other we literally have to lean on each other if it wasn't for my brothers and sisters in Christ when I started my recovery journey there's no way I would have made it through and still even to this day when I'm struggling when I'm when I'm needing help or when I'm needing to talk to somebody I lean on my brothers in Christ and and ask for guidance ask for help ask for prayer because it's it's absolutely needed and this isolation that we've been put in forced into by the the United States government just exacerbated the problem and so now we're trying to dig ourselves out let me tell you brothers and sisters if you are needing somebody to talk to, you are needing a uh, friendship or you're needing just a brother and sister to lean on, get to a recovery group. Get to a Christ-based recovery group because those are where your brothers and sisters are going to be at that you can lean on, that you can talk to about anything that you need to talk about. And, and they will help you through the process of recovery. But then also, it's it's not going to keep you in isolation. It's going to keep you in a community with others that are struggling with probably the same issues you are or similar issues. Uh, so, continuing on, this advisory draws upon decades of research from the scientific dis disciplines of sociology, psychology, neuroscience, political science, 
economics and public health among others notice they didn't mention biblical aspects because they're not studying bible aspects in community even though the bible tells us to remain in community with one another this document is not an exclusive review of literature rather the advisory was de developed through a substantial review of the available evidence primarily found via electronic searches of research articles published in English and resources suggested by a wide range of subject matter experts with priority given to meta-analysis and systematic... Look, they're using a ton of big words that, like, literally, if they had went to a recovery meeting and found talk to them or go to go to church they'll find that community is there it's one of the one of the biggest reasons why churches didn't want to go into quarantine was because they wanted to continue community and they knew that if we didn't stay in community if we isolated then we would continue in isolation. Look, brothers and sisters, the, the, the government has has uh, pushed us into a corner and said, hey, look, you're going to do exactly what we're going to tell you to do or we're going to... Uh, we're, we're going to make it worse on you. And... Many states did that. California, Illinois. They literally put people in such fearful positions that literally there was no other choice but to isolate. I'm telling you that, that you don't need to isolate. We have to trust God. We have to love God. And we have to ask Him for guidance on these areas. And... If you're trying to force relationships or you're trying to force friendships, that's not going to work. And if you're trying to gain and stay in community by only communicating via social media, again, that's not enough. That's not going to work. You need physical community with others face-to-face -face community where i'm talking to you face-to-face -face and you're going well you're talking to us now over a computer y yes because that's the way we get out to the masses but trust me i am in church every sunday i am in the church actually multiple times per week and i, I talk to my brothers and i talk to my sisters in christ and we all have to do that to remain out of isolation, to remain in community, to let our brothers and sisters know what we need to pray for, what, what, what we need prayer for. And it is, and if you're in recovery, it's even that much more important, which all of us have issues, major issues in our life, whether or not we're dealing with them or not. We all have an issue in our life that we need to give over to Christ and talk to our brothers and sisters in Christ about. This, this public health crisis is, is one that can be, um, one can be over, overcome. But let me, I think one of the important aspects of this article is that it does talk about some risk factors of uh, a lack of social connection, and and I see this as a as a major issue. Uh, the lack of social connection poses a significant risk for individual health and longevity. Loneliness and social isolation increase the risk for premature death by twenty six and twenty nine percent. Relatively, which I don't understand why they do that. Just give us the overall. More broadly, lacking social, social connection can increase the risk for premature death as much as smoking up to 15 cigarettes a day. In addition, poor and insufficient social connection 
is associated with increased risk of disease, including a 29% increased, increased risk of heart disease and 32% increased risk of stroke. Furthermore, it is associated with the increased risk of anxiety, depression, and dementia. So they put us in isolation, knowing that there was an increased risk to heart disease, of course, because the heart's lonely, right? 32% increased risk of, st risk of stroke, an increase of risk of anxiety because you're not used to be, and you put yourself in isolation. So the, the fear of going outside, the anxiety of going outside or the anxiety of being around people becomes real. And then depression, depression and, and dementia. Well, who wouldn't be depressed if they're isolated, if they're alone and they can't talk to people? Actual conversation. We've got to do better, folks. We've got to get ourselves out of our own way and go be in community and allow our brothers and sisters to love us and to love on our brothers and sisters. Guys, we, we just have to do this on a, on a daily basis. And I know that because of what we've been through, you may feel anxiety. You may feel depression. You may feel like you just don't have anybody you can talk to. But there's a, a recovery meeting near you. That's a Christ-based recovery meeting. Just look it up. Do a Google search for Christ-based recovery. And I'll put a couple links down in below uh, to some recovery programs. But know that I am a ministry leader for a Celebrate Recovery program. And so, yes, I'm going to talk a, a lot about uh, recovery and especially Celebrate Recovery, even though I'm not using their materials in, in these messages. But, uh, you know, being in recovery... Being in, in a recovery with, with brothers and sisters in Christ who are going through a same problem or similar problem lessens the anxiety, lessens the depression to know that I'm not alone and allows us to, to be open and honest with others that are around us. And I pray for that for you. I pray that you will receive Him, that you will receive others into your life and you will receive the help that others can help you with that they can give you and see that the benefit of Christ's work in your life so I pray that for you and I pray that everybody who's listening to this video or or uh, this listening to this podcast gets something out of it and understands that whether it's drug, drugs, alcohol, anxiety, depression, pornography, uh, family of origin dysfunction, if it's a struggle with life in general, if it's, um, you know, just whatever the issue is, self-image issue, food and body issues, uh, gambling, whatever the issue may be. There's help for it. There's not condemnation. We've all had struggles. And know that you can overcome those with the help of Christ in your life. Thank you guys for watching. Please think about liking and subscribing to the, the channel. And uh, supporting the channel as well. So thank you guys for, for being here. I'm very appreciative of all those that are watching and have watched and will watch. And I, I do this because I have been there. I've been that person that didn't know where life was taking me. And through recovery, he's changed my life. And he has done stuff, done work in my life that I would never have thought possible. And he will do it in yours too. Thank you guys. Y'all have a blessed night. Peace out.